Oh, welcome to WYTV7 Christian Broadcasting. Thank you for joining us on Health and Wellness Conversation. Tonight, we have Jocelyn joining us in our conversation. Again, the month of March is spiritual wellness. Welcome, Jocelyn. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you. So, um, I met you on Facebook. I know that you are an author, but can you tell me about your journey of spiritual wellness? Oh, absolutely. So first off, my name is um, Joycelyn. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. It's Joycelyn. And um, that's actually a part of it, that I've actually started speaking up for me and who I am and how I exist within the universe. And so this is fine with me. Um, my spiritual journey started um, maybe 15, 16 years ago, okay. I found myself in a, just a real dark place and i um, trying to please everybody and neglecting myself. And I kind of got in a place where it was either I was going to live tomorrow or live to see tomorrow or I wouldn't. And I had to make that choice to save myself and to start nurturing myself. And, um, I started just experimenting with things that made me feel good mentally physically was it a walk was it some time by myself was it prayer i just started experimenting with different things until i felt strong enough to kind of take those steps to ensure you know my own longevity and to be a purpose you know to find that that is excellent because spiritual wellness is most definitely about our foundation and how we are taking care of ourselves so i'm glad that you were able to realize what was going on with you and figure out the things to help you. Um, walking is a big thing for me because I feel like I'm able to see everything that God has created and how God takes care of everything that is in nature. So I should never have to worry about how I am taken care of. And Joycelyn, I said it correctly this time. So what is your favorite thing to do to take care of your spiritual wellness? Okay, the main thing for me is I have to make sure that I'm able to see outside of myself, just to know that I was chosen to be here and that God has a specific purpose for me. My purpose doesn't belong to anybody else and no one else can fulfill my purpose. So that's what I'm constantly reminded of, that I was chosen, not, that, not by a human or a person, a job, I was chosen by God. It could have been anybody else, but it was me. And why is that? So what is it that I need to do every day to make sure that I'm receiving the lessons, that I'm hearing his messages, that I'm having a constant conversation, that I'm being active in just in God's will, God's want, his desires for me. So I always remind myself that I was chosen. That I was chosen. That is excellent. I mean... If that's not an affirmation for someone, for them to be reminded that they were chosen, because of course, it doesn't have to be us every day that gets up in the morning. Um, God did not have to choose us. That is excellent. Bravo. Mm. It is so many people that, you know, complain for the slightest things. But again, you're right. We don't have to be here. God did not have to select us. And we do have a purpose. He gave mm. each of us our individual purpose to accomplish the goals that he's already set forth for our paths. So how do you implement spiritual wellness in your family? I just try to, I try to be a leader in my family. I have three children, I have two adult daughters and um, a teenage son. So I try to be a leader and set an example that my knee jerk reaction may not be the right reaction to the situation. Maybe that response is to a narrow place. Maybe I have to step back and kind of see everything and just to kind of say, you know what, let's just take a break here. Let's, let's look at this. Tell me what your thoughts are. Tell me what you see. And then I can tell you what I see. And one of the things that I'm constantly having the conversation with my daughters is that, okay, I'm not necessarily speaking to you now from mommy time. This is woman to woman. These are steps that I've taken and things that I've seen. And I have to continue to provide guidelines and boundaries for you as a woman, not just as your mother, but as a woman. So it's a protective space, but it's also a trusting space that if I've done what I'm supposed to do and God has given me what he's given me, if I've instilled those things, then at some point I have to be able to 
speak to them so they can hear it, so they can receive it and act accordingly. So I just try to have that constant conversation. That's excellent. I'm I'm like thrilled to talk to you because um, just in general, talking to people daily about spiritual wellness, some people are not aware of their spiritual wellness, um, but you very much well are aware of spiritual wellness. Now, I do know that you had recently had a vacation. Did you know that travel was a part of spiritual wellness? Or yes. You know what? I didn't know necessarily that travel was. I just know that it is in me to move. It's in me to understand me on different parts of the globe. So I'm not supposed to be in a space. I'm supposed to be in multiple spaces because my gift is to a multitude of people. And I won't be able to affect the masses by staying in place. So I have to travel to different places to see how I feel if I'm the only person that speaks English there. Or if I don't know what I'm going to eat, can I trust it enough to eat it? Am I that trusting in what my steps are? So mm. I, I, I don't know that I knew it was a part of it. I just know that it's a part of me. Yes. Uh, travel is most definitely a part of spiritual wellness. Uh, travel, anything that can get us closer to God. I mean, God created so many things and so many different avenues. And again, he didn't create us just to be in one space. Absolutely. I mean, he created the entire earth. He created the universe. Um, so there are so many things for us to see and experience. And again, it's about our foundation and how firm we are in our foundation. We can't allow our foundations to be knocked off. But I do believe traveling will strengthen our foundation um, and give us a little bit more security saying, you know, well, telling myself that if God did this, over here, this is what he can do for me. I have no reason to fear or fret about anything. You know, I am human, mm -hmm. but God most definitely has given me plenty of examples um, just in his creations alone of how well we should be spiritually. Um, do you meditate? I do. So I meditate, but it, I don't follow any particular program. I just literally sit in my floor and that's where I do my writing. That's where I have my best ideas. I sit in the floor and I just connect to the, just stay grounded there just for a few minutes to get some cleansing breaths and just to open my mind. And um, I also do some yoga. So I usually probably do about 20, 25 minutes of yoga each day just to kind of help me to stay flexible as long as I can take care of this vessel that I travel, you know, that I'll last, you know, I'll last even longer if I can continue to kind of maintain, you know, that part of myself. Yeah. So. Another thing with um, meditation, I was just reading the other day that you should, after you pray, it would be good to meditate like 60 minutes. Now I know I can't meditate exactly 60 minutes after I pray, but, um, the pastor that had written the book was stating that you'll start to hear God's answer or response to your prayers um, more readily after, but meditation is most definitely a good thing. So I just have to get into the practice of meditating after prayer because sometimes, you know, life happens. <laughs> right. So, you know, I think that, I think the thing with that in me and having just that active conversation with God is that, my conversation is always active and I don't have to be because I feel so close to mm -hmm. God. My, I don't have to necessarily be in a meditative state to hear him because oh. I hear him and I feel his movement in my day. And as long as I'm acknowledging his existence, I feel like that continues the conversation because I don't have an hour. To <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it, it it was a book presented to me. So I was like, let me read it. So, you know, I was like, I haven't really finished it. I just started it. But I wanted, I want to um, take a minute to tell everyone, thank you for coming. This is WYTV7 Christian Broadcasting. We are a nonprofit network. We are on LinkedIn, Twitter. We are on Facebook. And we are also on iHeartRadio. If you feel free, please like our button on Facebook and donate as we are a nonprofit Christian broadcast. And we love to bring health and wellness conversation to you as other um, podcasts as well. 
So please join us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. So, Miss Joycelyn, yes. Um, what could you suggest? Any other practices for spiritual wellness? You know, the one thing that always works for me is telling myself the truth about a situation. And, own, and owning my movement in the situation. If it's a bad relationship, it's just a relationship that I'm unhappy in, I, not to look to the other person for making me unhappy. What is it about me that has allowed me to get to this space? So looking at a situation and owning me in it helps tremendously because it also says I can walk away from something that isn't good for me. Excellent. So I, that's definitely, tell yourself the truth is the key <laughs> like, that's like the winning thing tell look at your look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself the truth about what it is and uh it saves you a lot it, it saves does you a lot. and I, I think relationship is like um in the atmosphere so to speak because there's been a lot of conversation about relationship this week personally that i know about so um that's a good yeah. thing to do when you're in a relationship to recognize who's who and what you know and what the responsibility is and who it lies on because you can't be bound by something and blame someone else when you know exactly what your responsibility to it is so any other comments <laughs> i think that um i was really excited to um have this conversation with you i feel like you and i connected in a in an open space of trust and communication so and that meant a lot to me because it reminds me that I am walking in my purpose when I'm yeah. responding to just a situation. What, it doesn't matter. I just respond to it and what it's supposed to be will be. And I, I'm very happy that you are open enough to receive the, my offer to say, hey, let me, let's see if I can help with this. I really appreciate that because it's reassurance. It's yeah. reassurance for me. I thank you greatly because yes, you did help me out and I know we'll finish that project. Um, and I believe we'll probably have you um, back to health and wellness at a later date again okay. um, for a conversation. So um, we are going to tell everyone live and be well. We want everyone to enjoy the rest of the month of March. Um, and as the Holy Week is upcoming, we want to just stay faithful. We want to be spiritually well, and we want to meditate. Absolutely. So I thank you, Joycelyn, for coming on Health yeah. and Wellness Conversation. I want to thank the listeners for joining in to WYTV7 Christian Broadcasting and also iHeartRadio. Again, we are on Facebook. We are on Twitter. We are on LinkedIn. Please click the button on Facebook, and if you're able to, um, share with us as we are a nonprofit organization. Thank you, everyone. Live and be well. Yes. Bye. Thank you so much.